Well, hello everybody, my name is Sergey, and I've been kiting for about five years, uh, actually more like eight. And the uh, time came to uh, update my lines on one of my bars, and I've decided uh, to go custom. What I wanted to do uh, is to test some lines and uh, actually see uh, what kind of weight they can hold. Uh, in addition to that, I uh, wanted to see if they are going to stretch and by how much they will stretch. So. This here, this uh, six lines are uh, QPAR Pro that I bought from kiteboarding.com. I've actually installed them on one of my bars and I'm riding with those lines now. I have uh, uh, three different colors of lines. Uh, they're all the same and they measure between about 1.4 and 1.4, 1.6 millimeters in diameter. But I have lines that are finished professionally with loops. And I have lines that have one loop and another one is going to be a hand tie knot. So the interesting thing about this uh, QPAR Pro lines is that they say that you can basically tie knots on them and they're not going to lose strings when you do that. So that's what we're going to test. So for, for testing I have this very simple rig. I have a uh, boat style winch that will give you about 1500 pounds of force. All you do is you crank it and just put it Put your energy into this. I have a scale. This is a thousand kilogram scale, so it's about 2,000 pounds. And as you can see, uh, battery is good. It's calibrated, so if I pull on this, it's gonna give us a reading of how many pounds of force is being applied. And I have a ruler here, so that will give us a, an idea of uh, how much the line stretch. And to attach the lines, I use standard uh, uh, line connectors uh, that I use on my kite as well. Well, let's go. Let's give it a try. See what happens. We'll start with which one should we start? We'll start with orange. My corporate color is orange, so that's good. And three eighths, six and three eighths, 40, 70. So at 122, and we are at six and a half, six and a half. 122, six and one half, 122. Okay, let's crank it again. Two hundred forty, two hundred twenty, six and nine sixteenths, six and nine sixteenths. Okay, let's crank it more. Two hundred and okay. Here we go, 270, 260, okay, the line broke. So, the line broke at a uh, loop. So, looks like it broke inside the place where the loop was sewn. So it's hard to say it's likely an issue with sewing the loop more than an issue with the line itself. There's too much, too much uh, uh, twine in here. It looks like that twine actually destroyed the, actually destroyed the strengths of the line. So apparently what you cannot do is you cannot put so much twine in the lines. Okay, well, let's test it again with a different line and see if we're gonna get different results. Unfortunately, I think our tests are not representative because we're breaking at the loop. But uh, I think the tests at was a, uh, 
with a knot going to be more representative. We'll see if it breaks at the loop or it's going to break at the knot. Okay, this is our yellow line. And with about 10 pounds of force, we are seeing six and about three sixteenths. These are these are three sixteenths. Okay, well let's stretch it, see what happens. There we go. Okay, we're at about 100 pounds. No, we're not. Okay, 150, 150, we are at 6, and uh, at 7 sixteenths. We have 150 pounds. 6, 7 sixteenths. Okay. 200 pounds, 260. I can hear it's breaking. 280, 190, 300. And we have the same problem. It did break and it broke inside our loop attachment. Okay, well, we learned that our loops are not strong and they are destroying the line and the line is breaking at the loop. So that's a that's an issue, of course, but it has nothing to do with lines. It has to do with loops being done incorrectly. So let's do the next test. Let's do the test where we're going to have a loop and a knot. And we'll see what breaks first. If a loop breaks at our normal uh, force, we know that our loops are bad. But if a knot breaks, we know that knot... You quiet! We know that knots are not holding the force either. Okay, so I'm tying a simple knot right here on one side of the line. I'm pulling it a little bit. So here we go. We have one uh, sewn loop and we have one hand tie loop. We're going to do the same thing. Touching the line. But we are going to measure the strength. Okay, here we go. We're at 120 pounds, 150 pounds. Okay, it broke. It broke at less than 200 pounds. And it broke right here at the knot. It didn't break at the loop. It broke at our hand tied knot. Okay, let's try it again. All right, here we go. So let's approach number two. Hand tie knot, uh, sewn, knot sewn loop. See what's gonna break first and at what force. So we're at 40, 50, 90. 200, 120, 230. Okay, and we broke at about 240. And where did we break? And again, we broke at the hand tight knot. Okay, well, let's try the third one. And we're going to have our scientific sample and we'll be able to calculate our averages. It's 30, 240, and we broke, and we broke at exactly the same spot, which is inside the hand tied knot. So that's pretty definitive. We can see that uh, we broke anywhere from about 200 to 250 pounds and all the brakes came inside the hand tied knot. So I wouldn't, uh, if I were running these lines, I wouldn't uh, tie knots on them. It definitely destroys their strengths. And what else we learned today is that the sewn loops uh, are uh, destroying the strengths of this line and depends on how they're done. They can be st more strong or less strong but there's definitely a uh, is definitely technique difference to making this uh, to making this 
connections here. I need to investigate it and try a few different ones. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it and you found it uh, valuable for your uh, line setups. Thank you. Stay stoked.